thanks to Lee Skyler, who directed and produced a fabulous documentary called Orgasm Inc. So I'm going to interview you and ask you first some questions. Could you tell our viewers in a few words first what does your film deal with and what do you seek to uncover with it? So the, the documentary uh, looks at the race to develop the female Viagra drug. So there's a drug available for men but the whole thing has been that there's nothing available for women at this point. So I followed the whole story for 10 years as they tried to develop a drug. And what happened was not only were they developing a drug, it turned out, but they were also involved with developing a disease. So the pharmaceutical industry has um, sort of changed hats in a way. They don't just bring us uh, pills. They also now, are, in some cases, are helping to expand the idea of what a disorder is. OK. And um, what are exactly your intentions with it? Whom are you, are you, whom do you want to address and which impact would you like it to have? So Orgasm Inc. basically looks at not only the pills, but the creams, the patches, the Orgasmatron, which is an electrode put in the spine, supposedly okay. to stimulate an orgasm. Uh, it looks at the genital surgeries that have been developed, all supposedly to help women have better sex. Um, and really examines whether or not those devices, creams, patches, pills actually work. And where the disorder, female sexual dysfunction, which is the disease that you're supposed to have in order to get any of these mm -hmm. things, uh, so came from. Basically targeting women and raising awareness. Well. So the idea, right, exactly. The idea is to, to give women and men the skills to deconstruct what the media is saying about these and where this comes from. Because the pharmaceutical industry has a tremendous amount of money and they put a lot of it into marketing. And in fact, the United States and New Zealand are the only countries in the world that allow direct-to-consumer advertising of pharmaceuticals. So they put money into advertising pharmaceuticals, and they also put money into paying medical experts to get on TV to make certain claims about disorders and about drugs. And those experts don't disclose often that they're working for the drug industry. Mm -hmm. So I want people to have a better understanding when they watch television and they see a doctor on TV or they hear about one of these drugs or this condition, that it's more complex than maybe it's being presented. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, uh, before, before you went deeper into your search interviews, when you started wor working for, for, for Vibes, did you expect to discover something dubious about the, this growing female desire industry? And do you think that these um, pharmaceutical companies, they delib deliberately made up this new disease um, in order to, to, make, to make profit? Or is it more complex? Because they're really depicted in the, in the documentary as being hypocritical in a way and, and knowing what they were doing. So what happened was in the late 90s, Viagra was a giant blockbuster when it was released. It was a multi-billion dollar blockbuster for Pfizer. And no one ever expected that the need and the desire would be so large for Viagra. Um, and when that market was so large, the pharmaceutical industry turned to women and they said, there's a bigger market here. But we need to have a clearly defined disorder in order to develop a drug. The FDA requires that in order to do clinical trials so you know when a woman's been cured. Um, so the pharmaceutical industry funded the first meetings. They handpicked the doctors. 18 of the 19 doctors who came up with female sexual dysfunction had ties to 22 drug companies. Now that being the case, uh, the disorder that they came up with was extremely broad. There are some medical conditions that women suffer from that can cause sexual problems. Mm -hmm. Things like having a radical hysterectomy can cause uh, desire problems. If you have diabetes, that can cause problems. Um, if you're taking antidepressants, that can cause orgasmic problems and desire problems. So there's a variety of medical conditions, but that's a very small part of the population. That's 43%. Right, right. And, they, and the pharmaceutical industry has promoted this idea that 43% of women have female sexual dysfunction, which is completely bogus. But it is true that probably 43% of women have sexual complaints now and then. I mean, who isn't satisfied? You know, I mean, it's not like we're satisfied. Most people are not satisfied with their sex lives 100% of the time. So, I mean, it's just part of everyday life. There yeah. are ups and downs, and sometimes you have great sex, and sometimes you don't, you know? So, and there's a, there are causes for that that um, either could be relationship problem issues, you could be exhausted due to stress to overwork. If you've been sexually abused, that can affect your ability to enjoy sex. Um, there are many different things. Lack of good sex education. We don't teach where the clitoris is, for instance, mm -hmm. or that 70% of women need direct clitoral stimulation in order to have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of women think if they're uh, engaging in heterosexual sex and they're not having an orgasm that there's something wrong with them, where in fact most women don't orgasm during intercourse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what do you think can drive 
women to be ready for a vagina job. Uh, I'm thinking about, about Charlotte, for example, who are, like elicits a lot of sympathy, I, I thought, to look at the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, what, what can, I mean, this is really, this is a, a huge surgery and something really hard to, to bear. And mm -hmm. What do you think can... Mm -hmm, right, so in the documentary I look at something called the orgasmatron, which is what you're referring to, which is an electrode which is put in the spine, supposedly to stimulate an orgasm, and I followed the clinical trials of this device, and the orgasmatron people remember from Woody Allen's Sleeper. Um, so it's sort of referencing this kind of like 60s sexual revolution. Uh, but the woman that I follow, uh, I'm not going to say whether or not the orgasmatron worked, but I will say that she was perfectly healthy and didn't realize that because she wasn't having an orgasm during intercourse that there was nothing wrong with her. And she had been told by the medical establishment that she had a disease. And I think that's part of the problem, that because we're not really well educated about sex, it leaves us open to be taken advantage of by the medical industry. Mm -hmm. So how do you think society should address this issue of female pleasure? Like by more comprehensive, comprehensive sex education and mm -hmm. such? Okay. Right, I think you're really hit on it. More comprehensive sex education would make a huge difference. As I mentioned earlier, we don't teach in most sex education classes where the clitoris is and that it the, has the most nerve endings of any part of the human body. Um, it's interesting in sex, we tend to teach about fear. You know, you're going to get pregnant, you're going to get STDs, and you're not supposed to teach about pleasure. But if we're going to start telling women that they have a disorder because they're not experiencing a certain type of pleasure, then we need to teach women about how to have that kind of pleasure and what is natural for most women. I definitely recommend you to go to the Quad Cinema on the 11th of February and check it out.